Okay, we are going to talk about China and its neighbors. We're going to get into some of the landscape and the climate and the elevation, what the land there looks like in Eastern Asia. So again, we're dealing with three countries, China, of course, Mongolia, just north here. And uh, remember, this is Russia. So China, Mongolia, Russia, Um, Taiwan, a little island country off the coast of China. Those three, Taiwan, China, Mongolia. And for reference, again, I know I've said this already, but India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, South Asia, we talked about that last time. So we have moved east to China, Mongolia, Taiwan. So let's get into uh, the physical or physicality, I should say, of China and its neighbors. So again, Mongolia, China, Taiwan. They're not labeled here, but you get it, I think. So when we look at physical maps, we've got to look at the key. So um, what does the key tell us? It tells us elevation. So at the very tallest, 15,000 feet, uh, half as tall as Mount Everest, um, it's probably going to be cold and get some snow up there. So right here, high elevation, the plateau of Tibet is called, but think about high elevation. Remember, just on the other side of the border um, is Mount Everest right here So um, in Nepal. So China and Nepal share a border. Mount Everest is right there, but China's border is there. Okay, so it is uh, very cold here. Uh, what else do we notice? Sea level. Remember around sea level, uh, I always tell you guys that things grow at sea level, right? So anywhere you see green on a physical map, things grow, right? So look along the edge. So near the coast, near the water, like right on the edge, right around sea level. And even here, right? You see all this uh, green. Things grow. And um, that's why most of the population in China is on the eastern side, concentrated along right in here, right? Here you see this brown, a little higher elevation. As you get a little higher, it gets a little dry and deserty. A little higher is dry and deserty. Really tall is mountains. So look, it's a little dry and deserty in here. And I'll show you a little bit more of that uh, in a minute. But think about dry and deserty, tall, cold, snowy mountainous. So that's why not a lot of people live over here. You couldn't farm as well there. So that's why most people live over here where it's green. So greens are good for living, farming. Uh, Browns, golds, purples are not quite as good. Also, um, this is a dividing line where I put the compass rose right here in the middle. Um, More rain, more wet here. So you get rain, good for crops and things like that. Um, And to the west, it is more dry. So in Western China, more dry. Eastern China, more rainy. Okay, um, climate. So let's talk about the climate. And this will explain a lot on how and why people live in certain places. So these circles you see here for climate, um, I don't know if you can see this because my video might be covering it. That's subarctic. So subarctic we've talked about, like in Siberia, uh, Russia. But in uh, here, dark purple on this screen is subarctic, really, really freezing cold, right? And nothing grows there, basically. Think of things covered in ice and nothing grows. Arid, desert, semi-arid, semi-desert with some greenery. So arid and semi-arid is basically all desert, right? So again, another reason why a lot of people don't live in this area of China. So we've talked about these before briefly, but let me get more into it. Um, So when we see green, humid subtropical, um, you know, green means green usually. So humid subtropical. Take a look at this little picture right here. Um, That means we get some rain, things grow, um, a place you want to live to be able to farm, um, be near water. Here's a river. Um, Here's the, uh, the sea here. But let's go from a definition standpoint and see what humid subtropical actually means. A humid subtropical climate is a zone of climate characterized by hot and humid summers 
and cool to mild winters. These climates normally lie on the southeast side of all continents. So let's go back really quick. Southeast side, this is uh, south and east. Yes, uh, humid subtropical, southeast side. Okay, uh, what's next? What's another color? How about light purple here? This light purple, continental warm summer. Uh, Beijing, the capital of China, is has a continental warm summer climate. Um, right in here, a lot of people live around this area. So very, very highly populated. Um, but let's look at what continental warm summer actually means. Continental warm summer. Uh, these climates have year-round precipitation rainfall. So it means, again, it rains a lot there. Again, more rain, usually good. Usually means uh, you can grow things. Usually means the temperature are um, pretty um, easy to stand and pleasant. Um, so, again, continental warm summer climates have year-round precipitation, which is rainfall, warm summers, and cold, snowy winters, right? So warm summers, pretty hot in the summer, but cold, snowy winters. So lots of precipitation all the time. So let's go back to our uh, map. Last one, dark purple or darker purple or between purple, between light and dark is in between. Continental cool summer. Where do we notice that? That is uh, kind of in here a little bit up in uh, northeast China, uh, the middle purple, right around here. Uh, where else? Yeah, kind of in here, but it's getting kind of chilly, dark purple and uh, subarctic. So mainly you're looking at this area up here, northwest, right? So let's get a give you a, a, a definition of exactly what it means so you can see it. So mid purple, middle purple on our uh, chart here. Okay, continental cool summer climates are similar to continental warm climates. So year-round precipitation, cold, snowy winters, but with generally lower temperatures. So basically continental warm summer gets really, really hot, really warm. Think about 80s and 90s, but uh, continental cool summer means it gets kind of warm, 70s and 80s. So continental cool summer, similar to continental warm summer, uh, year-round rain or snow, precipitation here, excuse me, and cold, snowy winters, but with generally lower temperatures, so it's just a little cooler there. Okay, so now I think you pretty much understand all of our climates in um, China. Okay, I went over this briefly when I introduced China to you guys. China's population distribution that just means where do the most people, where do more people live? How is the population distributed if we're looking at it from a map perspective? So this is China, right? All of this is China, the country, most populated country on the planet. But look at this, this dividing line that I told you about. It's uh, on here, it's straight. It's more curved in reality, but like, just think of it as this portion of China, this Eastern portion. 94% of the population lives over on this side and 6% lives over on this side. And remember, things grow, there's rain, continental cool, continental warm summers, and uh, that's why most people flock to this side. Also, shipping, shipping things out, receiving things, a lot easier back in the day when there were no airplanes and there was no Amazon and all that stuff. So, again, almost everyone in China all two billion of them, most of them live on this side. And here, sparsely populated. Not many people live out there. Remember, too cold, um, too um, deserty or freezing. You're either in the desert dying of thirst or in the mountains dying of cold. So um, either one is no bueno. Okay, so take a look at this line. All right, this line right here. Commit that to memory for a second. Take a look at it. And take a look at this. That dividing line is almost perfectly along this area where 
the climate starts to get really good for living, right? Really good for living. So let me go back. Again, you see it? This line divides desert and freezing from lush, green, rainy, good summers, uh, relatively mild winters. So again, let me, let me uh, show you again. Pay attention to this. Here's your map. Most people live over here. Why is that? That's why. That dividing line that was running right along here, that is why. Most people are going to live over here where things can grow. And basically, you can eat and you won't die of cold in the mountains or die of thirst in the desert. Right? Pretty simple. Okay, also, um, this is getting away from uh, climate and everything. But I also want to um, touch on China's one child policy. And one child policy is exactly what it sounds like. Okay, so from 1980, about 42 years ago, to 2015, so that is a what, 35 year period, each family was allowed to have only one child. So, all you kids, this is something you can relate to. Most of you have brothers and sisters. Um, if you were in China, each family, one kid. So in a lot of cases, you'd be only, the only child or your, one of your older siblings would be the only child. So they were only allowed to have one child policy. Now, why would they do something like that? That sounds uh, heavy handed, mean, right? For people who want to have a big family. This policy began because of overcrowding in China's cities. So. Like I always tell you guys, I'll give you guys that analogy sometimes. Um, if there was 200 people in our classroom and you threw one loaf of bread in there for uh, to supposed to last for three days, how would that go? Probably not well, right? We'd all be fighting over it, uh, right? So that's what happens, strain on resources. There's only so much food, water, electricity to go around. And so they said, you know what we can do? We can limit population by having each family only have one child each. Um, violators were fined, forced to have abortions, and lost their jobs. So if you ask, well, I know the next question, if I was in class with you guys, well, what happens if you have more than one child? Well, that's it. If you violate, violated or broke the one child policy, you were fined, forced to have an abortion. They saw you were pregnant, you already have a kid, to the clinic, time to, um, you know, uh, do away with that and make sure every uh, family only has one child or and you lost your job. So it's pretty severe punishments if you um, broke that law of uh, the one child policy. Okay, the policy changed to a two child policy in 2016. So they loosened it enough. They had restricted uh, population enough where, okay, now every family can have two kids. Then they loosened the policy. Further, in 2021, when uh, families were allowed to have uh, three children. So again, tw 1980 to 2015, one child per family. 2016, two children per family. So those of you who have more than two kids, it would be like, uh, you could only have two. I'll put it that way. Okay. And then in 2021, just last year, families are allowed to have three children. So um, population was being restricted, but now um, they've got it under control. So that is a look at uh, China's geography, climate, and one of their more um, standout features or interesting policy, their uh, one-child policy that lasted for about 35 years.